Hello friends and family and welcome to the Cave Talk. Too often we see top level talent rise to the occasion and wonder what that person has done to become the best. We hear about their achievements and what they've accomplished. However, what we don't hear about are the experiences they go through and the habits they've created to get there. Join me along with my co-host Malik Amin as we sit down with next level individuals to hear how they achieve success, conquer their defeats, and the experiences they've encountered along the way. Resilience, grit, and authenticity, you're sure to learn what it takes to become the best version of yourself. The Cave Talk. What's going on, friends and family? Thank you for tuning in to episode two of the podcast. If you are back here, um, that means that Miles won over your guys' hearts and influenced you guys to come back for episode two. Um, we have a very special guest here for episode two once again. Um, I'm joined by my co-host, Malik Amin. What it do? What's going on, Malik? How's everything going? You had a long drive from work on the way here? <laughs> yeah, I was coming from Southfield, so it's about an hour Zipping away. on the highway. Anything, First, any, anything for the Serbian sicko, baby. <laughs> First thing Malik does, comes in the house, goes right to the pantry, grabs a Laffy Taffy, yeah, comes but, out with more candy. Man, I got a sweet tooth, man. I don't know what it is. Uh, I eat M&Ms for breakfast. I just... Daily routine for me. <laughs> jo- joining us today for episode two um, is an Olympian, um, a couple time American, an NCAA finalist, and a fashion and, icon. And a fashion icon, probably <laughs> the hype beast of the NCAA. Uh, the and, and biggest. A, and a really good friend of ours, uh, like a brother, Stevan Micic. What's going on, Stevan? What's up, guys? How hey, you been? What's up, Jordan and Malik? How you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. What have you been up to throughout this uh, craziness that we're calling the quarantine? Um. So yeah, basically, uh, I was been I was home right after everybody got issued to go home back right. in uh, March after everything. It was like um, uh, St. Patrick's Day. We all went home. Yep. Um. And from that that point on, um, you know, I took about three to four weeks off just to wrestling and stuff. Um, you know, we were kind of like on pause. NCAs were canceled. And then the Olympics, which was, I had been well, Olympic redshirted for to train for, uh, that would be happening this August. That had to have been like a, like a damn, thank God that I didn't, I, I redshirted. Yeah. This yeah. Yeah. Then, so like, a lot of people. so yeah. So that redshirt, um, was basically me, me, miles. I mean, Logan Massa, we had three guys take, uh, Olympic red shirts, two of us, me and Miles, had already qualified for the Olympic Games in Tokyo, respectively, for our countries. So um, Logan still had to qualify and make the United States team, but yeah. he was still Olympic red shirting. So t- that takes three guys out of the lineup, right. you know. And so when that happens, um, you know, hearing that the Olympics were postponed, um, you know, first, I guess, that the NCAAs were canceled. It was a good thing that we ended up like making that decision back in September to be like, you know, it's best for us to right, take you, with the red shirt. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, um, because it was, it's not like it was a selfish feeling like, Oh, no. like, thank God we, we like aren't the ones that got screwed over through. Yeah. Throughout no, COVID, no, it but, wasn't. No, Bormat yeah. even was like, uh, our head coach in Michigan was just telling us like, uh, you know, he, he had to make a really tough call and be like, hey, we're really going to load up our team for 2020, 2021 season mm-hmm. and make sure we are, you know, the best team to go. Um, but, you know, we're, we had, everyone is going to put all our eggs into the Olympics and, you know, you know, let's be patient with the college season, which is actually very hard to yeah. do. You right. don't see that happening too much in, in no. college and uh, college wrestling. Right. Where like, they would actually like. Well, so that was like a, it was like a group decision. Yeah. yeah. Because oh, you had time. Well, it's not very, it's not often that one program has as many people training for the Olympics as Michigan did though, too. Yeah. At the I think, time. uh, maybe Snyder was, and I think Cox were the only two, uh, that I know that are from, I think they're both, they're both from different schools, but I don't think I've ever seen, uh, in our era, at least, uh, two Olympians come from the same school and yet represent two different countries too. You got to remember that as well. So, right. yeah. So having two guys that were already like going to the Olympic games, like we're already are going to be in Tokyo competing, um, at the weight class that we qualified, our, um, you know, it, it was a little bit easier decision for us because the feeling of qualifying, we, and we both we were both a match, you know, we lost in the bronze medal match, me and Miles, so it was kind of like we were very eager because we're like, you know, we're right there. We can definitely, you know, 
uh, contend to win an Olympic gold. Well, after that bronze medal match, it was you had to win the next one to qualify, right? No, no so no, no, no. so I I lost. Uh, if you're automatically in, they take the top. Well, it's technically six. Six technically. Okay. Just so two-thirds. yeah, there's two thirds, and so it was like the top six guys. If you were in the medal match, you'd already qualified. So I had to win the match beforehand to go through. Got it. So, um, with that being said, you know it was like we had to base that around like us, and then what the, a few of the guys wanted to do on the team that would take our Olympic red shirt. Right. And that, including Logan and Logan was kind of all in on about that because I know Logan loves freestyle too. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. So we kind of were just like, you know what, let's do this and let's really focus on that. And, um, you know, with NCAs, that was a little bit of a monkey off our backs being like, okay, well, like, you know, that was kind of a good thing for us that, you know, we didn't lose that year, but the Olympics being postponed at first, I was nervous. It was going to get canceled. Everybody yeah, of was. Course. Yeah. Had, you know, it was, it was okay, yeah well definitely well I, I i'm also training for the olympics so a lot of you know but i think i was about to leave to go to hungary on the 11th of march and then i heard everything about covid and then just everything seemed like it was just a domino effect and everything was getting progressively worse and i know it's a lot worse for you and miles because you guys have already qualified and then almost having that feeling they say that olympics is postponed and then are you guys thinking you know might you might have to qualify again and then just everything just unfolding um, what, what really went through your head when that kind of gray area was going on? Well, uh, the one thing I would say is that there was like pros and cons, but obviously I actually kind of thought, you know, I, it was scary when I knew canceled. There's no, obviously that's, that's yeah, it. There's but, nothing, yeah. but if, if there was a year, the postponement for one year kind of was like a little bit of a blessing in disguise first, uh, I think because it, it was, I needed like a little bit of time just because, um, I'm. Uh, even though I competed 133 pounds for college, I actually wrestled 57 kilograms for freestyle, which is 125 and a half pounds. Right. And for me, I'm pretty lean. It's, it's it's a tough weight cut to make. And that's, there's for the Olympics, you know, there's only six weight classes and there's no like 134, 135 pound weight. It's either 125 and a half or like 143. And the gap of pe- the weight is big, is a big difference, you know. Right. You know, everybody's around 15 pounds plus you know, making the weight at, at some point. So, yeah. so for me, it's like, well, I qualified at, you know, and I got to keep my body lean. And so the only thing about that was like, Hey, I got it. I got to keep my, keep discipline with my weight for one more year. Right. But at the same time, um, I, I have a whole nother year to get better because you know, my weight class is at 57, uh, me, including with like the Russian, the Turkish guy, Indian, um, Azerbaijan, um, you know, Turkey, everybody's pretty much like, yeah neck and neck you know there's no real anyone over the top you know right right no. there's no it's like who's you there's know. not like a world beater at your like no no you know, they're all tough yeah. I mean, oh yeah no, it's all, yeah. no everybody it's like a, it's gonna be a grinder to go through and you it's just the toughest guy that day at, right. Right, at this point right now and obviously like uguyev who hasn't won a european championship or european games the year yes, but he's a world's. two-time world champion yeah. Yeah. but he had not won either that he took silver the year that he won you know, right. made some Shabijan, adjustments in yeah. one. Right. Then took bronze the, uh, at the European Games, the tournament I took su- silver at. Right. You know, losing the guy I lost to in the finals. In the, right. in the semis. Miroslav? Yeah. Amir, yeah, Miroslav. Yeah. So, you know, that weight class is pretty pretty close. So, for me, this year for me is somewhere I kind of want to be able to, you know, take that the, the leap and step ahead. Right. Um, and, and it was like, um, I know talking to Miles, too, it was something that he – emphasize and it might not resonate with you it might but um just a mental break too for a little bit yeah it kind of helps it kind of nice. helps with <laughs> just resetting time right nice. big it, time it, it gives you a whole year to to mentally just refresh and you, i know you went home for a little bit for, for a yeah. while throughout the quarantine because everyone got home, went home like you yeah. said and then you hung out with your family that probably was mm-hmm. a, a great time because you're a big family man yeah big time so it was a great time to bond with your family and your sister's getting married soon so like yep. Being around your family throughout all that probably yeah. helped so, with, with so, mentally resetting. So, yeah, I mean, we've got, um, you know, right when I came back, I took about a couple weeks off. Like I was saying, I had a, a couple, like nothing serious, but just little nagging injuries just from nagging oh, yeah. pains. Yep. Just because, you know, making the weight cut down isn't easy on my body. It right. takes a little bit of a toll. How much weight are you cutting for that well, weight? Well, I, I weigh out like right now, like 140, 141. Um, but usually when I'm training on my body weight, I try to go from 138 down right. to like you know 135 right is my training weight and then i'm kind of like within like that last week week and a half it's kind of tapering down to make that last you know five six pound cut but you know for me that last six pounds is a lot harder 
because you know there's not much body fat on you yeah definitely and it's you know smart so i'm doing a lot of stuff with my dieting now and that that's totally helped a lot and but at the same time um you know as much as that's going to help you you just got to make sure you can, can maintain yourself you know with with there's a little bit more longevity in your career because uh, international wrestling you know like i feel like i'm just i haven't hit my peak yet i'm i'm you know i'm kind of getting into my pr like prime age of wrestling you know the best guys in the world are around you know 25 to 27 years old and you know after that age or 24 to 27 i would say yeah, right so like uh you know after you know, that's a lot older than most guys in, in the united states you'd be like well you know wrestling is a college thing well you know it's, really. it's you're still kind of like a junior level yeah. you know if you're looking at some of the best well, guys. i mean those guys too that for most guys overseas, it's they're like men wrestling, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. for for the most part, that's that's their yeah. only job. Like that's all they've done for the last how many years? You know exactly, and, exactly. And you see, so a lot of guys that you'll be competing against that are in their in their thirties. So had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties there, but we're back live. I got it. Everybody's good now. But um, you were talking about your weight cut and and the processes you take. Uh, to get there right yeah and and that's where we'll just continue off right from that so just keep going oh on so that. yeah just um uh, you know the way it's going to take a toll a little bit and especially the older you get you know you if, you, if i'm getting into my prime you know age of competition i want to make sure that i'm feeling the best and you know keeping you know preventative you know exercises like physical therapy just to prevent stuff right. you know it's something that i've had to implement in the last year and doing that for the olympic stuff so that's going to keep continuing i feel like keeping on that and keeping on the diet uh, program that I'm on right currently, um, you know, for when I'm, you know, getting into like that, that phase of competition, you know, right. you know, I, but I got a little bit of time away and just to rest my body during that quarantine time, right, right. which was super, super good for me. I needed it. Um, you know, it could be active mentally, you know, with, with my wrestling, watching a lot of film, thinking about my, what I can be improving on when I come back, kind of game planning, how I'm going to come back with my practices, um, and game planning just, um, different areas of strategy that I can kind of implement into my wrestling too. So it's, so honestly, it was really a blessing in disguise for a lot of people. I think not just me. Um, as far as go for training for the Olympics, yeah. for training for the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Cause a lot of people got screwed yeah. Yeah, in this yeah, quarantine, but if you're training no, for the Olympics, for the Olympics, yes, yeah. yes, it totally, well, it's uh -huh. crazy. You, you see a lot of these athletes and, and I've noticed it a lot um, on social media, especially Athletes are just a different breed. I mean, I, I think it, you see the common person and looking their perspective on something like this. And then, you know, athletes just find a way to get it done. And I know you were talking about um, your training. And I know personally you told me a lot about, you know, you training with um, Matt Gentry and then yeah. obviously Paul too. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Because Matt Gentry, if, for those who don't know, he's finished that fifth at the Olympics. And yeah. Stab, I can give you a little more information. but Yeah, so – Matt Gentry is somebody that lives around my area. He uh, is an NCAA champ from Stanford mm -hmm. um, and then wrestled the 2008 and 2012 Olympics for Canada at 74 kilograms. And uh, he all, he, in the 2012 Olympics, he took fifth place, only losing to Jordan Burroughs in the quarterfinals, I believe. I'm not sure yeah. which round. And then he lost in the bronze medal match to the R Russian Denis Sargush. So, and very close matches both ways. Right, and those so, are two, like, yeah, the those two are best two of the best guys in the like, world. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, and, he, you know, if he was on Which the other side of the that that's, yeah, he might have been, been a yeah. match yeah. for finals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, he's, he's very good, and, uh, you know, he's actually, I actually kind of got in con contact with him. Um, he actually, was, they were building the place that he's a physical therapist at. They're built, it's like three minutes away from my house. And ended up where in Indiana. Yeah, yeah, and it didn't open up in Indiana. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it, which is great. We're I live about forty five minutes away from Chicago, so we're kind of in like the greater uh, Chicago land area. Um, so basically, they didn't open it up because of quarantine. But I still drive to Crown Point, which is about like ten fifteen minutes away, to go see him. And then we kind of started being like, hey, like you know, he was helping me out, just do different exercise while I was home. You know, so it just started out knees. as a, like a, a relationship, like from a physical therapist to a patient. Yeah, patient, but you guys knew then, each other, obviously. But. Yeah, we knew we knew of each other and stuff. But then we were kind of like, you know, like let's get on a wave of it just being like, we should start training soon. We we you know we know some people that got have mats or have a gym or something like that, and then we were able to start working out like once a week, or twice a week, whatever. Um, and honestly, it's that's been really cool to have him because 
Um, he has such a good feel, such like a, a good body. He's like, and he's not as big as you'd think from wrestling that weight class. That's about 163 pounds. He, he's actually lighter. He weighs probably less, a little less than which, that. Which, when we say once 163 pounds, that's Most like guys are pure like, muscle too yes. at 163. Yeah. Pounds. Yes, yes. <laughs> like these it's are like the a, best guys in the world. Yes. So he, so he's probably weighing like naturally though. Now he's, you know, he was kind of bulking up to make, make that be at that weight. Mm-hmm. Right. So he weighs only like 160. So that's like you know, and so there's about like a 20 pound difference between you. Yeah, and, him. and it's yeah. a good, it's a good to. Work work my positions, talk over some areas that I kind of have questions with. And right. um, he kind of could give me a feel that I wouldn't get unless I was like overseas or from somebody like a top tier guy. Right. On, like, yeah. a, Cause he competed basis. for team Canada, right? Yeah. yeah. He, he, he competed for team Canada and wrestled like a couple of Olympic cycles, I believe. Right. In, uh, Two or three, I, at yeah. least one for sure. I don't know how long it was before the 2008. Yeah. Um, but you know, yeah, I mean, he's, he's, he's excellent in, in all those areas. And he actually trained at Michigan too. Um, he did in 2012 that year that he yeah, was he actually did. at university of michigan in the cliff Keen wrestling club too mm-hmm. under bormat and yeah. josh and everybody jimmy and those guys yeah, yeah. Jimmy, which kind of which kind of shows your age because what grade were you in at in, in 2012 <laughs> that one was in high school yeah, we were both in high, in high school, school. <laughs> yeah so yeah. pretty yeah. pretty young to be competing with all these top level guys you know especially like we said with miles qualifying for the olympics you're 23 years old right yeah, I just turned 24 in April. Yeah. Just turned 24 in April, so, so yeah. qualifying at young, 23 uh, years old. Qualifying at 23, Super yeah. young, yeah. yeah. But um, you, you, you just talked about your diet like 10 minutes ago. What, what does the diet of an Olympian look like? Because that's, that's something that I think for people that are listening out there that aren't athletes, uh, like professional athletes like you are, and training to wrestle in the Olympics – they don't. They have no idea what a diet could be like for them, right? They can go on a blog post and probably read something, but um, what does a diet of a of an Olympic wrestler look yeah, like? Yeah. So, so you know, this is actually a cool question because it's I feel like there's fun. a lot of people who are either <laughs> yeah, but people yeah, it's, it's not a fun it's diet. Fun it's pretty thing, plain. Yeah. It's discipline. Uh, is a big part of it, and you know, first of all, I guess you'd say you got to understand that um, wrestling and cutting weight is a short term weight loss. Yeah, thing, yeah. like how many how many pounds would you say you cut like in a week? So so basically, I guess I could just give, give you give you this. So if I can lose, you know, three and a half to four kilograms within a couple hours, if I need to get down to weight, which is about eight pounds, right. and that's like a that's basically stripping my water out of my body. Um, so so that's obviously something that if you do, you're doing it for a very short amount of time. So then once you hit your weigh-ins, you can replenish your fluids back quickly. Right. Um, and then the rest is kind of getting your body fat and your body, like being able to react your body to, to perform at a high level when your body fat's low, body fat's low, when you're, you're a little bit nutrient depleted, um, you know, per se. And you, you just are, you know, kind of like in that, that mode of like, you know, survive like almost your body's so you know low. Yeah, it's you're, you're, tr- and trim that yeah. you're you know you have to be able it's like to like feed me. Yes, yeah. you, so, <laughs> exactly. So, but you have to have the energy <laughs> to compete two hours later after you make weigh-ins yeah. right. to be able to perform at your best. Um, so training your body to have energy when you're low like that, yeah, and right. that's what the diet mm-hmm. is really. Yeah, and getting your weight slower, yeah. lower and lower, and making sure you're prepped on the amount of water that you're drinking too. Yeah. What what kind of foods would you say that that you were that you were eating on a daily basis and then like you were definitely like i cannot eat this while cutting weight at all well um yeah so because i know there's people that that cut weight and yeah they don't even look at food at all they just eat whatever they want to eat and then they just cut the weight off right yeah, then yeah. they're usually dead tired so because they cut so, the weight. So weight logan, cut- logan kind of does that a little bit <laughs> logan, massive, i've never yeah. seen somebody eat lobster bisque the night before wins. <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's only done. you gotta train that. yourself for that but yeah, yeah you do. but but for an for somebody that's training for the Olympics, it's yeah. a lot different that you're um, training for so, the NCAA. Yeah, so basically one thing that I could say is um, I wasn't really sure about, you know, I'd just kind of taken tips here and there to do it. And then I at the World Championships uh, back in September when I qualified, I actually didn't feel like I had the best tournament, um, especially the first day. Um, I, mean, I lost in the quarterfinals to uh, the World Silver medalist that I had beaten back in uh, – um, I think it was June at the European yeah. Games, Otley from Turkey, and I and uh, I honestly I didn't feel like I wrestled my best match there. I actually had a good first period, but the second period I kind of was fading a little bit, and just that whole day I just didn't feel like I had that energy, that like same type of zip to my to my wrestling that I would usually have. Right. Um, which and, is super important, which is by super the way, for important. people that don't that don't know, like 
you're wrestling over a span of 24 hours like you're yes. wrestling over a so, day so i'll give i'll give a, a breakdown the, the world championships or olympics are basically going to be you're going to make weight at like eight in the morning and then you have two hours the whole day yeah you have two hours to like get to rest and like right. you maybe two and a half and then the tournament starts and then you're going to have to wrestle one uh you know you know if you keep winning you're going to wrestle to the semifinals. so first second third round is going to be done all within the next three hours. And then you're going to have your semifinals that night, maybe two or three hours later, so you get a little break. But then you still got to make sure you're putting the right stuff in. You can't just start binging food. You want to have good energy because the next day, if you make it to the second day for the metal matches and repassage, uh, you have to weigh in. It's scratch weight again. So they don't even get like a, any weight allowance. You, you have to weigh the exact same weight. I have to weigh 57 kilograms on the first day and 57 kilograms the second day. So it's not just like, like you have a, you also have like the mental aspect of that too. Oh you're, yeah. While it's, you're wrestling and, and a lot of people try to block it out, but you can only block out so much because yeah, you're going to hear it in the back of your head regardless. While you're wrestling, you're thinking about, damn it, I'm going to make it through today and then I got to make weight tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it can be tough. Um, you know, um, but you know, basically I, I, you know, after that tournament, I was like, you know, I want, I, I made it to the Olympics. That's great. But like, we need to figure out how I'm going to feel the best. I got to make sure we do that. So, um, shout out to the UFC performance Institute. Um, I actually was going out, I've been going in out there, uh, you know, back in November yeah. and doing ch- a couple, you know, month, um, evaluations and stuff. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. You yeah. were going to the UFC. I was, was going to say uh, something out like in Las that, Vegas. But... Um, yeah. so yeah, uh, Clint Wattenberg and Bo Sandoval. Um, I work with them. Uh, Clint, I work with for my, um, diet nutrition plan. Um, which is, you know, very helpful. And then Bo, who actually used to be, uh, he used to work with coach favor at the university of Michigan, Yeah, Mike favor, who's our uh, head lifting coach for wrestling. And for, I believe most of the sports, everything, yeah. I think everything I think but football of, and basketball. Yeah. yeah. Head of strength yeah. He's head of strength and conditioning for Michigan athletics and yeah, anything, but, um, those two, but, uh, he, he looks up to coach favor and, you know, with, with favor running, you know, all these 35 guys on our team, the strength programs for the college season, you know, it's hard to get kind of what I need to, to stay strong, right. and, but not put on mass. I have to have more endurance muscle and, or explosive and explosive muscle, but I right. can't like, you know, I can't be doing like a lot of heavy weight. Right. Yeah. This like, isn't go to yeah. the gym and do power cleans and bench press and <laughs> with whole, like tons and, of weight, and with tons lift. of weight. Yeah. You're trying yeah. to max out every week. I mean, it's more like high circuit training, endurance training. Yeah. Like so, that. so it's similar to that. I mean, you know, there's stuff that where I had a f- different types of, of tests and, or and different types of things that I, I was measuring to, to go and make my plan. Like that was like specific for me, you know, and two times a week for me is like the perfect amount of like lifting, yeah. you know, that lasts about an hour long. Yeah. And then I was doing a lot of like, you know, sprint training. I was measuring my heart heart rate too, figuring out where my heart rate would was best for you know. And then um, with Clint, with this my this was diet, all while in you at the UFC performance. Yes, incident. and then but then we you know we tr- we kind of like translated a plan for me. And Carry on. yeah, one of the cool things that I thought was really interesting was just like getting my diet plan of which you guys were asking me about earlier of like um what you need, what that kind of foods you would eat. Yeah, um, yeah. and having that those foods kind of like training your body to depend off a different energy source, which I think I never really knew about this, but, uh, for me, um, I'm more of a, I'm carb dependent. Like they would measure you off of like your breathing and mm-hmm. they would see like you're at your rest, resting metabolic rate, what your uh, you would, you'd be burning. And most yeah. people Mal- burn. Malik would be candy dependent. <laughs> nah, <laughs> yeah. Hey dude, I tried the keto diet for a minute and that's easy by no feet. And now it's Stevan's talking about carb dependent. I think if you're going to be successful wrestling, I know there's, there's some people who, who do and do success or are successful on the keto diet, but I think wrestling is a sport for those who do not know um, that you need to be exploding for six minutes if, if you're going to be successful. And freestyle six minutes for folk style seven. But I think, like you said, with you being carb, carb dependent, yeah, but people who don't know also is carbs are sugar, everything with sugar, your body needs glucose just to fire and your muscles yes. don't fire the same off fat. So I think did they, you so, know, do that, do the testing and then figure, is that so, how they, so figured, they out? figured out I was carb dependent and that's important too. But what they needed to do is because I wasn't going to be able to have that many carbs to fuel my body. Yeah. I, they needed okay. to change my body over to where I could become more fat burning dependent because, um, 
you can't it's hard to eat like heavy breads and pastas and stuff like that all <laughs> the time yeah. Yeah. obviously that's the most efficient type of, of energy but I, right. i'm not going to be able to do that while being low right so, so you're, you're, they, they had to figure out a way to trick your body to say well yes, i don't want to carb and a lot of that would be like i could have my carbs in the middle of the day but like going to bed or in the mornings Facts. having a lot of different fatty types of foods you know right. so like, you'd only stay in ketosis for almost what you, 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 it's not like you're like putting your body into ketosis technically but you're um eventually you, you, you kind of are you would I think. overnight i think around like i think yeah it's around the i don't know how long it is yeah. but um but then also like your heart rate also uh your body like depending on how like like exhausted you are and how fast your heart's beating yeah. there's a range where you could be uh like say i think it was like 128 beats per, around 125 to 130 beats per minute that's like the range where you're like burning fat. Anything oh, higher than that, okay. you would be burning your sugars. Sugars, okay. And your stuff and things like that. So, so after bro. my workouts, after I do my hard cardio or after anything like that, I could like go on the treadmill for like 30 minutes and kind of just be in a state where I'd be just burning those, those fats. So my body would kind of be like, oh, okay, burn fat. And I feed it with, with fat, fatty food. Like, uh, not like, you know, when you say fatty foods, it's like healthy food, but yeah, like, it's like healthy fish. fats. Like yeah, healthy fats, like fish nuts or, yeah, nuts. Um, avocado different things like that right peanut like yeah, types of like nut butter yeah. right anything like that so um with like pro then with proteins as well and like fruits and vegetables whatever um did they make all this food for you while you were there or does this well they actually had a, they have like a cafeteria <laughs> where they could yeah. kind of like point but it was it's more of like personal they gave chef. me ideas to like how i can make my breakfast they gave you lunches. guidelines guidelines yeah. example example dinners that would be easy yeah. right you know so honestly, that's something that many people aren't really like educated about. And I wasn't really even educated about until recently. Yeah. yeah and it was yeah. crazy learning stuff. Like and there's that. so much out there too. Like you, there can, is. you go on the internet and you can search like diet, any, plan, any diet, any could, diet, Atkins, paleo, 50, thousands of things would, would pop up. Yeah. You, you, it's just, it's just such a hard thing to gauge. And I think what you did is Cause everyone's is, different. Yeah. My yeah. body's well, different from your body and different from my Yeah. Body. Can everybody take that step though? That's the thing, you know, Stevan did did that you know he went to the ufc institute obviously it's important you know uh, some people just kind of fly by the seat of their pants i know i was like that for a minute and then making 65 kilograms <laughs> was yeah, was like you were like that up, for huh? like all yeah, of your hey we'll talk about that later but um... there there's there was times in college where i would remember and we were you were I mean, you're gonna laugh because stop on it, the way man. here you guys you always zebra gotta cakes. rip on me dude but, i went straight for one week so after season as my uh I think it was my junior year just after the NCAA tournament and um Jordan <laughs> No no this is sophomore year. No no this, this was before this, you this, this, di- this I think this, this was your red was, shirt year. Yeah, this no, was no, before no, no. I came to Michigan. There is a so lot you, of different stories, okay? I, 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 I in high school I had uh frosting in in Okay, so it chips. definitely was your red shirt year because <laughs> I live. I remember my houses. I lived in the dorms, was and then it? I lived on Tappan, and You're then right. I lived was, with you on Woodlawn. It was. Woodlawn. You're right. It so, was his so first year on Woodlawn. His redshirt year. Oh, this guy. This guy's. I. This. This is not the right thing to do. So anybody listening, my trying bi- to take notes about body, dieting, my body is just don't do this. Man. So Malik. <laughs> Malik claims that in order for you to get like the want of eating something out of your body is just. Eat the hell out Eat of it. Eat the hell out of it. <laughs> eat it like that. So this dude I goes did, to the hey, store. It worked. It worked, didn't it? I didn't eat zebra cakes and all that for about it a couple for months. You, but this yeah, dude goes to sick, the store. Sick, that's why. Yeah, I he goes horrible. to the store. I felt horrible. Buys like tons of different Debbie cakes, candy, all this different crap. That Surprising on diabetes. Good for your body. Goes how many, upstairs. How many boxes of zebra cakes did he take? Dude, like three or four. <laughs> he locks himself in his room. Adam Adam Coom was trying for, to come upstairs and get some too. <laughs> for the whole week. <laughs> for the whole week, this dude's munching cakes in his room. Doesn't come down for dinner. I never see him coming down. And then like at the end of the week, it was like Bro. a Sunday. He comes downstairs and his arms uh, are like 10 boxes. 50 boxes. No, just zebra this cakes. guy is exaggerating. Not 50, I mean, but like. It's like 10. It was about like 10 boxes. It was more than that. Bro, dude. Your arms come were on, like man. this. I would be diabetic by now if it was more than but that. But the look in his eyes looked like he just went through hell. Well, like, he, like it looked like. Uh, well up. You don't know what that means. It looked like the guy yeah. on the edge of, on the end of Super Size Me after he ate all the McDonald's. Dude, I swear dead. to God. Like, that's, that's what Mal's looked like. He's not kidding. But, it was horrible. But, dude, it's just like so funny because, like, I look back then and then how I am now, it's like. I still, I still do have binges, but it's like when I'm cutting weight and I, the seriousness of competition, and especially you, you can attest to it at the level of competition, maybe in college, you might be able to do it when you know you have somebody who's not as good, you know, you, yeah. you know everybody knows that no, no disrespect to your opponent, but in, in, in international, you never know what the draw is going to be. Yeah. So you could have a world champ first round. So your weight cuts got to be to the T. And I think 
with cutting weight in general, I think, you know, some people do it the right way. Some people do it the wrong way. But I think most of the time when you do it the right way, you're going to feel better. Your results might carry over. So I think like what you said with the UFC and taking that extra step, we got a little bit off topic because Jordan brought that up. Yeah. But the UFC and just taking that extra step with your diet and um, just it just shows, you know, and attests to, you know, how serious that you take wrestling. And I know Jordan might want to get on to the next question, but no, I, I it's, this yeah. is, no, it's just a really cool yeah, thing. No, I mean, but, but it's just so funny, you know, looking at wrestling, it's just a different sport. And it, it's kind of funny how everything changes so quick. So for those who don't know, it's, it's been, um, I think it's been what, two years since it's been a night before weigh-ins. It, it's, it kind of followed the same suit as like, uh, ultimate fighting where it used to be night before. And for some odd reason, <laughs> out of the blue, they changed yeah, it they changed to it two to... hours before, which, a lot of people don't know it's it's excruciating on on a wrestler to see something like that because if you have the night before you don't have yeah. to worry about sleep you don't have to worry about any of that you weigh in you know you go and you eat and you worry about competition the next day but when he says sleep it's like extremely hard to sleep no after. yeah, yeah it is it's just and a honestly fact. when you're when you're when you're cut, cutting weight it's like it, honestly the worst part about it honestly it's not even like the to me at least it's getting just, down to weight and like holding it if I was awake, it. but then trying to go to bed uh, yeah. at, on top of that is like one of the, no mo- the worst things. Yeah. Your yeah. mind is just like no supplements going to help. It's you. like yeah. it's like so everybody can relate to being hungry because someone's Starving. everyone's been hungry at one point. Dehydrated, but it's like <laughs> being hungry, like like you didn't eat breakfast and you're at work all day and you haven't ate lunch and like you're yeah. waiting, you're dying to get home to eat dinner. It's like that times like fifty when you're yeah. trying to. Cut I, I don't even think that's it. even a good. So you 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 would like. Be down to weight. You're very slim. Your back, like muscles, and like it almost feels like your organs like hurt you. Yeah. Like, yeah. And, like your no, it does. Like, your back. It does. Like, hurt, like everything. And these are the guys doing it doing the right something. way too. Like you guys no, are doing it yeah, the right yeah. way. I, yeah. It's just, it's just like Stevan said. It's just, it's part of the sport, man. It, they, if the yeah, you can talk stinks. to so many people it to learn stinks. behavior. To learn yeah. behavior. Yeah. Eventually you it learn. just stinks because the Olympic weights are just so much different because they cut a couple. You know, wrestling's a struggling sport in the Olympics. I, it might not have been that way. Stavon could have went up to 61, but he doesn't have that choice, and I don't have the choice to go up to 70. So it just you just have to do it. It's one of the necessary. Yeah, evils. because I think that what people always would ask me throughout growing up and and hearing that I wrestled, and I'm sure they asked you was like, well, why don't you just go up a weight? <laughs> and it's like for the most <laughs> part, you? <laughs> you could, and you could get bigger and go up a weight. Yeah. But at, but regardless, you're going to be cutting weight at some point. Yeah. To, to, to Every, be everybody does. In wrestling. And yeah. There. There's. I mean you kind of have to prepare yourself to c- go up a weight as well. It's not just like yeah. some guys are going to do better uh, c- going up a weight class if they have the size to be, you and know. It's either size or technique. If somebody's just technically sound, like so July or Snyder and those guys, are, even Miles, Miles did really well because technically he was sound, but he also had to gain a lot of weight. And even Stevan, if he really wanted to go up to 65, he could have a really good shot too, but. It's just the sense that, of, yeah, you know, there's so many different, yeah, than just, there's just so many you know, different, like yeah. you said, one, yeah, one year 100%. to figure that out. Yeah, oh, yeah. Show that, yeah show because up. if you go to 65, let's say you did go 65, you'd still have to make 133 for the college season just because the lineup aspect, you don't have, to, when you're wrestling internationally for a country like Serbia, or I'm like for San Marino, there's no other competition. I mean, you, you kind of decide what weight you're going to go. So next Olympic cycle, you say you want to go 65, you can do that. Uh-huh. You know, if yeah, that's for, that's kind of the plan. I would love to go. I want to go up. Yeah, you know, maybe take a year where I'm at 61. Because like, yeah, yeah, because you're not Olympic year. 65. Yeah, 65 well, do you fight. think so? As far as you know, the plan is like, there's the Olympics are in 2021, and then three years later, the Olympics are going to happen again. So as far as far as we know, right, COVID could change a lot of things. But do you think that? Do you think that it's just one and done for you, or do you think it's going to be something? No, that no, it's pursue? something that I want to do a, a, at okay. least another cycle. And I'll be I'll be 28 at that point. So at your peak, depending on yeah, that's kind of like I I was saying earlier with Malik. Uh, you know, your peak kind of is in that in that age range. Uh, especially me, I've always been kind of a late a late bloomer too. Uh, yeah. With wrestling, I've always been I was always a lot smaller too. So um, you know, I feel like I think you hit I was your always like spurt about now. What I think I think you've hit your growth spurt just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, it's just funny because yeah, I like growing up it, like I did like the bone age test thing you know, like when I was younger. Oh yeah, I they did said that I was too. like two years younger. Then like I will, oh, then okay. like I think my bone, then my body. You, and I don't know like how that if that catches sure. up well, or yeah, not. I have no idea. Sure. I'm assuming it's now caught up, but like I'm just saying, I don't think it took it took me till I was maybe like like 21, 22, because that's when I felt like yeah. I started actually Getting being strength. mature and strong enough against the guys in my weight class that yeah, were right. my size, definitely. Like to hold just position and stuff like, and that not being the issue at all. 
you know? Yeah. So, so I think that's like around the, that's like the age I finally was like, I can compete against the best guys when I was like 22. Right. So you'll be, so, and then a lot of people are like in their prime at 25 to 28. Like yeah. Now, you know? yeah. So, yeah. so you'll be like 28 years old competing in the, for 20, the last 24. And that, do you think that'll be it for you? I, I honestly, I do, depending on like how, how successful, you know, wrestling's bringing me, um, you know, like how how that's gonna like you know affect my like life as in like a, a career yeah as yes. in super yes. hard to 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 make a career out of wrestling yeah no yeah, yeah it just doesn't I, I, honestly yeah, it's it like for pay. me for me right now i have a lot of stuff going really well towards that um right. and so does miles like in, in malik even too you know like if you if you can keep making it to where yeah. we're you know like where we're competing on the world stage like this um you know, especially once college is done for me and miles too, you know, yeah. when we have, you, then have, you can start getting paid yeah. and then you can start, you know, profiting. And then you could talk to sponsors. You can talk to different things, tournament winnings, everything like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, depending on how well that goes and building a brand for ourselves, you know, that could, that could do a lot. Would you, you have, see, would you have won money by now? Uh, uh yeah, I think so. Yeah. You, like how much money did you have to turn down? Like well, I, a lot. I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> too much. Too much to yes. have for conversation. Yes. It's yeah. Anyways, yeah. but like I don't know if it's gonna matter for the the Olympics. It doesn't matter, and the World Championships doesn't matter though, because the worlds. If I would have gotten bronze, I honestly I don't know if you would have to win or I'm not sure the rule, but um, the those like the top tournaments of the each year you can like technically like you can get paid for right yeah because it's it's they some type of stipend now. yeah mm -hmm. yeah but yeah anyways um you know if building a brand like you see like you know burrows or chimizo and you're Dave. starting to do it now on instagram <laughs> the <laughs> no, blue check he I'm just, just got the blue fun. check <laughs> no but honestly that's not a bad idea to like try i, I mean no. to try to kind well, of social media i was listening to social media man. People, social you know, media is everything these days you're right I mean, yeah Jordan, you can you can build the a brand well, there, out of anything i mean there's a lot of people who i would say people like who do nothing Literally, there's just a lot of people that aren't even as qual like qualified, qualified that are just yeah, building perfect, up, perfect example. up, building up, uh, you know, like a cloud, I guess, just yeah. from for nothing, for, no for from what? just for a video you know, on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, just keep promoting and promoting and promoting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Which doesn't it's crazy because that can skew a lot of people's vision of yeah like, of what's knowing what's good and what's yeah. not. Yeah, you know, exactly. right. so it's like, well, if I'm doing really well, I can if I if I yeah. help kind of push my exactly. myself early. It could definitely like really pay off at, like down the road, yeah. big time. Yeah. Because you post like once a day on yeah. Instagram. Well, I, I started to. <laughs> not that much. To. No, I have. I no, have yeah, once I a have day. Not, oh not, my not, goodness! Not, I haven't like been on Instagram around. that much, but I no, probably I should have. be. I, I have recently, like, and it definitely does help. The more you do, I I don't really follow the. Uh, I don't know the algorithms that like keep things yeah. moving though. It's, well, yeah, it's funny too how everything's kind of shifted because I remember in the beginning it was like. Stay off social media, just like yeah. Let that's your what I was literally just gonna say. Yourself, and like yeah. you don't, you don't gotta 100%. post it. You're gonna be a champ. And that's kind of yeah. how I am mostly as a per, as a person. I feel it's really hard. It's like not hard for me to, but to try to keep like humble and modest about uh things. Just it's it's difficult to be like oh, I want to be humble and modest about it, yeah. but then like also try to push. Which you can still do that, but uh, you know, it it, it it's like kind of hard. It, it feels kind of like. A rough media in a little bit you know what i'm saying yeah, right. it's like fun talk it's like fun talk like you're not you're not you don't mean anything by it you know it's just like a like a subtle like, well, a yeah. lot of people Nudge. like you were saying after college and even starts a little bit in college like for the people that are popular as far as winning goes in the ncaa but like you do have to create a brand for yeah. yourself because you, you want to create a following base because if wrestling something you want to pursue as a career you and gotta you, have you're coming following. out with no following base where no. are you gonna get a career out of you know what i mean yeah. it's like Guys like David Taylor who have their own institute yeah. for wrestling, it's because of all of the the base following base that he's created throughout yeah. wrestling at Penn State. Yeah, and the career he had. Well, it's there. crazy because you look at a guy like Jaden Cox who has a um, substantial um, record of uh, of accomplishments, and his following compared to somebody, um, I, I I don't really know. Like I don't really want to bring up names, but somebody let's say who's not as qualified, and they might have triple or not quadruple as many followers, followers. and followings. Right. So. I think we kind of got to shift, you know, the the perception, kind of like what you're doing back back to the light. There's people who's kind of like, you know, yeah. I, I, I would, hey, I'm not going to compare it to another well, wrestler, but well, somebody like media. like Addison Ray, but perfect social. example. Somebody who's <laughs> seriously, literally, literally, someone who has what are they doing? Like dancing on TikTok. I mean, what what accomplishment Don't you have does a she TikTok? have? I, <laughs> on, I deleted it. I did for a second. I don't have a TikTok, I, you know what? Actually. Quarantine you, Jordan, got the best to no, everybody. I have a Me and but, Jordan don't have TikTok. Nah, you guys are smart. You know, I did it for everybody. I was the, I was the sacrificial lamb. I got it. It's not worth viewing. It's a waste of time. But going back to what I was saying, 
But I think a lot of people. If you go, if you yeah. if you talk, Jordan was kind of talking about the negative light that Instagram has or social media has. That people said, stay off that crap and you just don't 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 bother with it. But you got to kind of think you want to bring the attention back in a positive light, kind of like what you're doing, posting about wrestling, posting about you know being a role model to younger kids. Because yeah, I know sure. a lot of kids look up to you. You might not think that because you're not there day to day, but I think you know a lot of like not majority of your followers, but a lot of the people that follow you are, are, are younger, let's say like probably 12 to 15 if Stavon years were old. To, if Stavon were to sell t-shirts on his Instagram, it would be he all could. extra smalls and smalls. Be yeah, it would. It would. <laughs> Realistically, yeah, so many, it so would. Many, a lot of it would, kids it would. Him. Yeah. They love Stavon. They love him. I so, swear to God. So the one thing I, I think is actually crazy is like you kind of have to start like pushing more of the things that you'd be interested in. And for me... um anime or, no listen <laughs> no li- don't get going on. No, no, that's not don't, get going. we'll be here for don't, another hour we'll not get going on like street like i like fashion and streetwear yeah a definitely. lot of like a lot of street clothing like casual yeah, hype beast, man. like like yeah so i've sort of become sort of a hype beast over the last two years uh, like getting into shoes and sneakers uh are you, you are, have, you the, are you the biggest hype beast right for sneakers i i he do did. have some i do i do have like a he's bot. got the cr7 I, I like ran to the supreme bot but i did have yeah. a bot like yeah. for because but, that's the only way you can buy okay here, well, here's a question what, you can get, you can do it manual but like anyways all i'm saying before we we, we, we like talk keep moving on um if i do want to post like me wearing nice clothes or something like that um it's uh, sometimes i do want to like instagram is a is a platform where you can show what you like to like you like yeah what yeah you're into, pictures yeah which also kind of conflicts with stuff that like my followers kind of resonate around which is like high school middle school wrestlers that are like oh like look up to me and other yeah. wrestlers around the world that are like fans of mine right which is cool they, they might also like 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 street being in cool yeah. clothes that i like them into but then you know it's also tough because you know, me being like I said, we're like humble. It's like hard to be like taking videos of every single practice and like always like look like I'm like look at what I'm doing today with yeah. practice. Yeah, moving. yeah, yeah. When yeah. It on, you in almost reality, need that's to, kind of like yeah. I feel like I'd have to start moving toward to like push myself as a brand. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, it's like it's, weird, it, it, like how it contradicts yeah. itself is like a little different. You know? Yeah. It's Whatever like you got to do. But you brought up a good point. It's not just like. It's not you're not just doing it for that. You're doing it because you want people to see who's who, who you are. That's exactly outside, outside like of wrestling. Instagram. Yeah. yeah, that's why I like Instagram, and I I still think the people who really do like me, uh, as like as our fans of Ryan Wrestling, like also do care about like what I'm Your into style. regularly. Yeah. So they don't really care. And, and I mean, a lot of there's a lot of little kid wrestlers who are like into like the cool the cool shoes yeah. and cool wrestling shoes and everything like that. So right. so honestly, it's like it really doesn't make that much of a difference. But I'm just saying, and, and like like putting content out to keep just promoting yeah. and promoting and like yeah. being uh, what is it like getting more impressions and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. All that Promotion. There's stuff. a lot of analytics and like a lot of more analytics. Yeah, to it's nuts. social media. It's nuts. Yeah. And how many yeah. times you post and all that. Yeah. hundred percent. But, um, Jordan's got a question what? for you. Oh, I thought you said you're going to ask him what, what, what his most expensive pair of shoes was. Oh my God. No, I never, <laughs> asked. You can, we, I guess we can ask. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I basically, I've I've done like been getting into reselling shoes the last like two years. Um, I kind of like my first shoe I got was this like Jordan the Jordan fours. Where I don't know how many people out there know what like their Jordans or Nikes and anything like that. Yeah. But basically like a Jordan shoe where it was collabed with this like uh, contemporary artist called Cause like K A W S. I didn't. Even and notice. I got these I got these sneakers. I they were like they're yeah I remember. talked they, everyone was like I saw you know my buddy told me about it, you should try to go for these Friday they're gonna sell for a lot. I I bought them. I got lucky. Got in the waiting room on my phone. Bought them for three hundred fifty bucks, and I sold them for like over a thousand dollars. Yeah, they went for over a thousand. So so the, you do and you sell then, a lot of your stuff? Yeah, I honestly I flip mo- mostly everything okay. that I get, Should and if it. I really 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 like it, I will keep it for personal. Right. Or and sometimes like I had just bought a pair of these like new Travis Scott like Air Maxes that came out. Yeah. Um, because I had sold my old Travis Scott. Um. Jordan ones, which like really those, hurt me. Those are pretty expensive. Yes. So I uh, the Jordan ones are like the original like like Michael Jordan sneaker base like that style. Yeah. But Travis got like I did a collab and like Nike swoosh is like flipped on it and it's like yeah. like a mocha brown color. Yeah. And uh, 
I ended up getting those for the retail price and I ended up selling them for like 1700 yeah. And because when I was Olympic red shirting, we weren't on like stipends or anything. And I was like, I need, I need the money really bad <laughs> to like for rent hustle, and just like, like, well, there's a lot of travel people do that for the business. They make millions. Yeah. Of yeah. Dollars. And it was something yeah. that I wanted to hold on to is kind of like something I really liked and it really hurt me trading it, which is crazy. You guys were like, Oh, it's a pair of shoes. But honestly, it has a lot of value that can, you know, rate it's like a stock, you know, can go up or down. Right. And I sold it. So I was like, you know there's what? Literally I, a website called stock X. Yeah. That, that, and it's out of Detroit. Stock stock market for shoes. Do. They, do they, they, do they, they sell they, everything or is it just shoes? Uh, it's like they do dead stock shoes, which dead stock means like brand new. So like they, oh, they really? monitor like the prices of like the shifting of like what people are willing it's to literally bid, a buy stock and market. sell. Like there's yeah, graphs and everything. Yeah. yeah. Knows. Uh, and now they're getting in more into like other streetwear, like Palace, Supreme, like Bathing no Ape, idea. everything like that, which I like, like a lot of that kind of clothes. Yeah. Malik so, has no idea. Yeah, and, how, do, what, how do you even, how do you even buy them? How do you get like, if something like new comes out, like, like a Supreme <laughs> shoe, like how do you even get it? Do you buy it off StockX or like, no. So how, you, how do you, like, so, how do you get it? Uh, so basically, um, like for Supreme, uh, every, Supreme has like seasons of during the year, like fall, winter, and spring, summer, and it lasts like so. Spring, summer, like tomorrow, actually is the last day of of, of the season, um, and and every Thursday during that season at 11 a.m. New York time online it drops and you can get you can get a lookbook no you can get a lookbook that shows you like the items that will drop you can look up like on like instagram like supreme community whatever and just see like the items like palace uh, another uh like a skate company i actually think their stuff's like really cool uh palace skate their like their stuff's awesome friday at 11 11 a.m and then there's also like Bathing Ape, which is like a Japanese like streetwear company. It's like Saturday at like 11. Yeah. And, and usually they have also like the Bape. seasons, you know? Right. And it, depending on like how hyped up that item is, they, or like, knowing the resell, if you can ha- get a, uh, those items, you can like flip okay. and sell them. Yeah. Um, OVO does it too, don't they? Yeah, OVO yeah. does it too. That's yeah. a little more like low key. Drew, like Justin Bieber's Drew House draw, draws like some type of like low keyness to it too. Yeah. And, and depending on like how cool that item is, like those something like OVO Tim Timberlands came out and everyone was like going nuts for those. <laughs> OVO yeah. Tim collabs do very very well. Yeah, it's like yeah. Supreme and North Face is that's ridiculous. Brand. Like yeah. you know that's those the brand. Supreme like about. North Face is like always does like a really crazy job. Palace Adidas has good stuff. Baby mm-hmm. Adidas. Every oh, all of that stuff. Okay. You said Palace? Palace. Yeah, about, they're yeah. yeah, they're really good I've quality stuff. Um you know Supreme's really good branding. But I think Palace has some I mean I'm not gonna get into that, but I do have one last thing I would say about cool thing about that you think's awesome. So uh, this, I got the Supreme uh, box logo shirt, which is like the Supreme's like staple, uh, like item that they usually release a box logo like once or and twice a year. For people that don't know, yeah. it's literally the, like the most simp- simple thing. It's, it's, it's all it is. It's like iconic. a squ- like a rectangle box logo on your chest that says Supreme. And they change the colors of like the the shirt, and it's all it's like a red supreme. And what's it sell for retail? And the, usually lot. box logos, you know, usually go for like sixty bucks retail, right. and then they resell for like a couple hundred bucks just for like a t shirt that's like yeah, uh, supreme like t shirt. All it is is like uh, like like a white tee or something <laughs> it's like, like that. A white tee. So basically, <laughs> this uh, because of COVID, there's a shirt that there uh, came out, um, and this artist named Takashi Murakami. He does like all of those like really cool. He basically did like the Kid See Ghosts album, like yeah, he, oh, you know that that item, the yeah, album yeah, cover, with, the album Kanye. with Kanye yeah. and Kid Cudi. Yeah, he did. He did the art for that. He does that flower with like the yeah like, OVO multiple did color a flower. With him, OVO yeah. did too. Did yeah. they, he he did a collab it's with Supreme for this fingers. T-shirt, and it's like Supreme box logo with like Murakami flowers and stuff in it. Right. And I ended up was like in this. It's called a cook a Discord cook group for for like hyped items. I entered a raffle for it. The sh- uh, I ended, the the dude made a grand. It was like forty bucks an entry for twenty five different people. So he made like a grand. So you paid an entry fee. So I paid the twenty five dollar entry fee, and I won- and I won- uh I won the the raffle. So this shirt retailed at sixty bucks, sold out in like seconds, so fast. Like yeah. one day, so you, they had it on for for the raffle though. You don't win the shirt. You that just gives you an entry to get to in, buy it. Yeah. Yes. So you have to pay twenty five bucks and for to luck, get into a, to raffle. a raffle for forty people. And I I got lucky and got so it. 80, this April. So it cost you eighty five. No, to it make. cost me twenty five bucks. No, 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 for no. The sorry, shirt? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this was past the retail, the the the, the drop day. The drop day it was sixty bucks. Oh, so you got the shirt for twenty five bucks. Yes. So you, oh, okay. you, you oh, yes, you but the shirt it. yes, I I like like so the the shirts had already shipped out to everybody after like it sold out in seconds. So you you get it for twenty five bucks, bucks, or you lose your twenty five bucks. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So yeah. I got I ended up winning the shirt, and I'm holding on to it right now because it's like my staple grailed item. So you have it. I have it, yeah. and it and in size L, which I got it in, it's like 
$585 oh that you could resell it for. Yeah, and I ended it's up like buying it. Stock, I ended up man. buying it like brand new and like read the wrapping with like the receipt and everything from some dude who raffled it off and made a grand off the raffle. Yeah. For, I made I want, want it for $25. Right. And honestly, oh, yes, that's you what I'm saying. Do something like that. That you can yeah, if, yeah so like if you resale and you can like build a platform people like do raffles a lot of times on like right. the items that aren't like super See, hot. i didn't know that because I, I would like to say that i i'm pretty like up to date with that stuff but i didn't know like people go on discord which is just like discord's a, like the new way of people yeah it's like a stuff. voice platform people it use it is. for gaming and it's like, messaging it started all, off as gaming it did and they, then they, it, it kind of yeah. shifted now now bit. it's yeah. like they do for shoes they'll be like oh this is the new stuff that's coming out that would have been go a on the website it's time to. and then like they'll be like oh there's if, and if you're in the cook dude there'll be like raffles people who use bots you can do that and people with bots you can be like oh if you run a bot i'll give you you know 20 bucks and to, a bot is like an automated program on a computer that basically you run it to checks out it. automatically on the website you don't have to do at. anything so you don't have yeah. to click any buttons you have to set it up is the hard yeah it's difficult. So, right, anyways, yeah, yeah the, but I, just, you have a lot of passion for uh, like I knew that, wear. but not as much as like yeah. yeah. Maybe a lot of people now. don't know that, but it's yeah, yeah, people don't it, know right? that I'm I'm really into into stuff like uh, the shirt. I, I'm wearing a W Tap shirt. It's like a Japanese like streetwear fashion like uh, group that like yeah. a company so you're that I'm excited really like. to go to Tokyo, not just to wrestle. Oh, like I, I love I love it. I like Japanese culture. It's really sick. Um, yeah. But um, honestly, with with my like wrestling and stuff like that, if I do kind of push a brand, I do want to like keep a lot if i can if i can eventually like make a shoe make clothes i'd love to keep it kind of really up to style and cool and i think yeah, people yeah. would really think would you be could. awesome you okay. know what i mean i think you yeah. definitely could you know because i think there's a lot of people out there that really do give a lot of give a like a lot of care to fashion but like are kind of like nervous to admit it yeah like they don't want to be seen like yeah. a, like a wimp no. or something like, no no <laughs> i know and like and also wrestling's a sport too and i i definitely totally understand like wrestling's a sport it's low budget. It's 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 cheap. It's cheap to wrestle. Like oh, it's just me. You get, you get some sweaty clothes. Like you don't you even need wrestling shoes. shoes. Yeah, yeah, you need exactly. To wrestle so, socks. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, yeah. it's something. Malik is the king of wrestling and stuff. Bro, I wrestle yeah. barefoot. And he used boxers, to have holes bro. in his socks and, and wrestle. <laughs> me and Miles. Me and Miles have. In our living room, boxers. Every socks. time I used to wrestle Malik, he'd have stinky socks. Yeah. On. Just, I, I, I'm you know what? Joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking, Malik. Start. No, but Malik's Malik's socks always has a hole in it. Yeah, always got, you know like, why? Malik's always in the I'm doing the craziest stuff, man. That's what I said. Malik watch, has knee kicks. Watch out, way. UFC! I'm coming. Malik could go into the UFC. Actually, I, I could I see might. Malik I'm going. Thinking there's about a lot it, of honestly, people. A like, lot of people are telling me, like, man, you 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 should do it, man. You what would be your UFC the, name? The Messiah. Messiah. Yeah. Come on, Malik Messiah. Me. Honestly, the Messiah, man. The reason I think Malik would be good is because he'd be so unorthodox to fight. One, I was talking. He could knock you out and choke you out in any different way. Honestly, like really surprising ways. You think Malik? Malik would not get like knocked out very easily. You think Malik can knock you out? Some, you know what would happen if I trained to fight Malik? Probably. I feel bad, man, because I, I I'll hit honestly, Miles in the face. Honestly, I'll feel bad. I honestly, like if you didn't know each other, I'm saying. Oh like, man, oh, hey, somebody's honestly, trying to. Whoop honestly, me if up. I were fighting Malik, uh, I feel like I could maybe. I feel like I would be edging him, and he would like catch me with something stupid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, Stevan, really crazy. Stevan did one time. He actually got pissed at me, and I. You can leave this wherever you want to, fans. If <laughs> Stevan has a UFC career or not, we don't know. He literally, I snapped his chain. I think I pulled your chain off your neck. Bro, this guy came at me with lefts, rights, and just hit me all over. He hit me in the chin. I'm like, God damn, man. This guy's 125 pounds. He found, like, Kamar Usman punched me in the face. <laughs> I mean, hey, you live with Malik for three years. You know something's going to happen. I got, yeah. I got punched by Malik in the face. Bro, uh, I can hit hard, man. Malik, 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 I actually, Malik can, hey, Malik's listen. Kicks listen, with scary, this, is, this is legit. This is legit. When we are at, So I work, at a, work out at a place called Barwis Methods. A lot of people might not know what it is. It's professional-grade sports training place. And we were actually doing kind of like a – a punching exercise, which was registering the force of your fist. And Miles is like 1,000 something. And he weighs 100 and almost 200 pounds. I weigh about 160, 170. And I, I punched at like 1,079 pounds of force, which is mm, pretty <laughs> impressive, man. For, for how wow. big I am. And I was thinking about it after. I'm like, damn, man. It's like, man, should I, should I go in the UFC? Should I not? And I was talking so, about so Jack Ross today. But. Malik goes to Barwis. Punches a machine that's something that you would see at a carnival. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and now, do not, do and not. Now he might go to the UFC. Hey, listen, because listen. he punched a machine. Listen, now okay, I've been thinking. There at the carnival yeah, right, right. Now my mom, sudden, first of all, fight. first of all, to clear up anything, my mom would would never let me. If if I really wanted to, I could, but realistically, it doesn't make sense. You. I'm 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 a I'm studying for to be a financial advisor. It's totally the complete opposite. Like people who are in finance, I'm not I'm not saying that they're uneducated, but I'm just saying. 
I got an education from University of Michigan to go into fighting and then throw that away, you know. It's kind of – but we'll, we'll see. You can always never use know. it after you You never fought. know. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it'd be crazy. You know, Cejudo did it. He was an Olympic gold medalist and went into fighting. Obviously super successful. So I think you, it, it, with a wrestling background, you're definitely a, a big head start in jujitsu and any type of fighting. Because if you can take a guy down on the ground, it's- yeah, stay, staying stuff on on your feet and learning how to like not, you know, even obviously like, you know, well, you, know, you, you have to and, well, and, and what, also yeah. like learning how to like take somebody down properly. Or you have to read. You have to do a lot of yeah, reading like, too. Like, uh, Askren. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. went straight down like this. Bro, need, but. after that, I mean, I'm glad he retired after that. If he would have fought again, he'd be stupid. I didn't know he retired when you get when you that, get knocked he? out like that, man. You just, just announced the retirement. No, he's re- <laughs> he had to retire, bro. Master all, literally. I've never seen anybody get knocked out cold for that. He Are you did, a fan he, of the UFC, Stephen? I do. I, love I, the UFC. I am a fan. I mean, you I went mean, to the performance institute. Yeah, but you might not I'm like definitely. I'm definitely a fan. I I don't want to say I like follow uh, fighting as much as I used to when I was like younger. Yeah. I followed UFC basically like up through like when I was like before like UFC even a hundred. Like I remember watching UFC a hundred like on pay per view yeah. when I was like young. Yeah. So I followed it like kind of around up through that. And uh, I honestly, I lost a little touch with it when I started, like, with my wrestling started kind of increasing a little bit. And uh, just catch, you know, every there's so many more fighters coming in now. And, and wrestlers. And, and a, lot of, wrestlers. a lot of them are wrestlers. Yeah. yeah. yeah and it's just hard for me to, to follow, I guess, you know, every single, like, fight and uh, card that's coming out. And yeah. Putting right. it on every Saturday night and yeah. stuff like that. And you're watching through a bunch of fights and... and I mean, I know a lot of my roommates, like Austin Acid, who we live with for yeah. wrestling Austin, Michigan. Austin, awesome, huge, fight. huge fan of fighting. Dave Habit, another huge <laughs> fan. Both <laughs> guys know. Um, actually, I'll show, I'll share a funny story. So, if you don't know Dave Habit, um, we're really close with him. He competes at the Cliff Keen Wrestling Club for Slovenia. Um, of course. And yeah, he's Slovenian, and he. He was from, like one match a, away from qualifying. Like didn't Molinero yeah. qualify? Uh, yeah, no, yeah. Got, in 2016, he, got, he, got he was a match yeah. away from qualifying for the he Olympics. Got, he got host. Um, he's a European bronze medalist and an NCAA finalist. Yeah. Um, he's and uh, anyways, he loves fighting. And our buddy Austin, you know, after college and stuff, he had gotten to like, you know, I want to do the uh, parlay parlays, um, like betting, like through uh, Bovada or whatever, all these different like sites that you can do like parlays. And basically, a parlay is like. You bet like twelve fights, ten fights, eight fights in a row, whatever the number is, right. to like get who the winner will be out of all those fights. And if like you you you, yeah. you got to get them if, all right if one, and win a lot of money. Yeah. But yeah. if one anything happens in the fights, they'll go wrong. Oh, no. Austin did this and was like, it was like a nine fight like parlay. 12, it was like a twelve fight parlay. And he got to like the there was two three. fights he had gotten them all right and lost the like the middle fight. The last fight ended up he right. Lost, Bisping lost and um Some, and and Garbrandt lost. Yes, Dillashaw and and, and, uh, and, then and it made Austin Dave lose like his eleventh out of the twelfth fight. Yeah. And Dave Habit, we told him about this, and he's like, "Man, I always pick the fights right. I know every all the stories. Yeah. I, I get this right." So so he tells us that he's doing a parlay, like uh, an eight person, an eight like fight parlay. <laughs> he tells us he's doing an eight fight parlay, and me and Miles Ma- are like, "Oh, that's really cool." So like he tells us about it. He's like on the car ride with with his wife, like going somewhere, and he's not watching the fights at all. So like me and me and Miles are and Malik are watching. Like we we like follow and the guy he bet on first fight got knocked <laughs> out in sixteen seconds. seconds. So after bragging to us about the whole he time, the, whole the guy got the guy knocked got knocked out in sixteen oh, no. seconds. So he, had 16 he lost. Seconds seconds of like hope and then it was just it was Dude, done. he the had no idea so he, did, he was gonna watch the fights on his phone when he got home and, and Stevan and miles are torn we, we called we called him and we thought that he saw the fights we're like man he's like what happened and we started laughing and we felt like like total assholes but it ended up being like what about know. what about a malik story a Malik story about it? About- yeah, because there's a lot of there's a lot like of experience between you yeah me and you malik lived together, together for these are gonna three, come out. three years um because i have a lot but i'm not going to share them because so well, what, what, them should we, what should we share. talk about i'm saying of a good hey, this has got to be at least pg guys you no it could be a young. little bit well are you saying you have a lot of sto- he right? does no i'm kidding he i probably stories. do but but no it's all right in college um, come let on. me think funniest malik story that you could think of that like won't get him in too much trouble because his dad and mom are probably oh dude come on that's not, i'm not worried about that yeah i'm you worried are. about the people listening oh okay maybe i'm trying to think of a good story about malik that i could think of Man, there's not too many like there's just like little stuff that I like. Man, the Armenian arm wrestler measured? Is that what you're talking about? No, what? Oh no, no. Uh, I'm just saying uh, in general, like it's Malik has so many like funny things going on from a daily basis yeah. that I don't honestly can't think of like. There's a lot. Of I can stories, name like man. ten little things that really are like stupid that I I would just laugh at that Malik has to tell me, but uh, um, 
I don't know. Uh, There's too many. Come to on, give me from. something that Jordan that you can. Jordan, do. Jordan has so many because this guy literally. If just, you tell just, one story, I guarantee I can I can name a story. Ma- a Malik, Malik story, yeah. Oh, t- a Malik story, like yeah. in college, because. All right. So and then I will come go, up with something. You know what? Here, here, after. hold on. Before he says it, he's gonna say I return beer cans to get in the skeet. That's the story, isn't it? No, I mean, oh, well, that well is now funny, that's though. a funny story too. <laughs> so I, I can tell that story too. I read it on myself. Well, basically, all, all of a sudden we're like trying to figure out somewhere to go to like a. First of all, I'm not a booze hound, let's, by the way. Okay, let's, let's, hold let's on. Take before that. we talk about booze hound, let's set <laughs> let's set the precedent. Like right now, Malik will agree. Malik doesn't have a lot of a lot of money right now. Because you no 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 because you never saved your money you always spent no it. now now I'm fiscally now you do but, but we're talking about college Malik like we're financial talking about, advisor oh, for God's sake talking about college it's a story it's something like that living living you know day to day off yeah. of like you know oh I, I do have a Dude, I do have I a funny spent story. I literally bought a gaming laptop for nine hundred dollars on my mom's credit card and she had no idea and then the credit card statement comes my in. funny story you almost ruined it because it's about a credit it's about are you talking having, about the Patagonia. Oh my god! No, it's about not the go, 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 no, go ahead. All right, well, all of a sudden we're story. like we we're gonna pregame for Skeeps, and on Saturdays Skeeps is it's a like bar a, in Ann Arbor, a scorekeepers, yeah. and and uh, it's like the best, like the most popular like bar around, you know, college bar. college bar. So we're gonna go out, like like I don't know, we're gonna go out on a Saturday night, and you know it was like Dude, season was over, kids, and you know Malik, we're all excited to yeah, go this out. Wasn't <laughs> yeah, oh, and we're man. all excited to go out. Nobody and all would cover for us. Like man, we're like you know. Every week, weekend, we're like Malik. Like I pay five dollar covers every single time. Everybody, you was, everyone, everyone everybody always was covers of legal me. Age. Yes, everybody's of legal oh, age. Come on, at this man. Point. This is you're saying and facts. Like, listen, I know, but listen, Malik is like we've all just kind of like ah, oh, we got you, Malik. We'll get you food after too. We'll get you a beer, whatever. Like little things like that, and we're just like one time, you know, like Miles, like no, I'm not doing that. You yeah, Miles, like, and Miles everyone's is, like, yeah, you know Miles, what? Like I don't want to. I'm not paying your cover either. And Jordan was in town. He's like, ah, you know what? Like no, Jordan. Jordan I'm not said no, no, either, no, no. Like, Jordan said he would, but he's like, man, you gotta pay me back next week. I'm like, man, I owe way too many people money. So so he yeah. said, all right, <laughs> well, I guess you can get cans, and we had a bunch of like like Bro. like beer cans, like pop <laughs> Ten? cans. Just laying yeah. around and like in the trash that get thrown away from like a game tailgate from like earlier. Yeah. And uh, Jordan's like, "All right, let's let's uh let's take it to uh." No, I took it. So I took it. To? I took it to Meyer. Meyer. Jordan drove me to Meyer, and How, well, it was ten dollars. You had to, collect the cans, you had to like, walk around and collect some cans. No, I did not. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, guys did. Making, you did not. This guy is you, lying. You went to the apartment complex next. You're like cans. You got no, cans? no, that's not what happened. See, th- this is what happens, everybody, when they start twisting the story. That's not what happened. I okay. was not picking up Tell cans what happened. off the see, street. All seeing so everybody, I was waiting. I was waiting, like waiting for people to like throw their beer out and like, stuff like that. Like Adam, would, he bought like a six pack or something, and then AO would buy something, and then that people just went on and on and on, people buying stuff. And I was like, okay, man. I was adding up my hand like okay, ten dollars and thirty cents. I'm like, that's enough to get in the bar. So <laughs> I go and I take it back. It was like ten dollars and ten cents. I went in there. I had a great time. I told him if he could get in, if he could get take the can. Jordan back would buy me as I'd much beer as one. Yeah, buy all those drinks because at so, that point, and at that the point, these guys are like, there's no way Malik's coming. And it's like ten thirty. I show up to the bar. I have ten bucks. Jordan's like, what the hell? How'd you do that? And all of a sudden, Jordan comes home. He's like, you. You sob, you took all the all all the empties in the recycle bin. Yeah, Malik was, Malik was like a middle house. schooler fundraising to go uh, on a, on a, like a over those one like Bob, trip. the scholastic the 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 cutoffs of the, the yeah. cereal boxes. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, collecting the box all the, tops. the box tops. Yeah, but yeah. but my funny Malik story. This relates to a credit card and clothing in college. Man, Malik, don't judge me. Malik's gonna be like that didn't happen, but it definitely happened. What? Malik had his mom and dad's credit card. To be it because it's tough to be an athlete in college and have a job. You so don't you, get anything. You, you, don't get you anything. can't work. They and they look at you like you're supposed to pay all the bills. This was before college athletes got food too. Like yeah, you get yeah, food nothing. Now. But um, so Malik had his credit card for use only for food. And <laughs> I, I know that, I, I thought of something. This, I'm not going to deny this story this. because it's and probably Malik. Happened. So Malik's been locked in his room for like a week and a half. His dad's calling me. He's like, "Where's Malik been? I, I don't know. He's been in his room." So. Anyways, Malik's in his room. About a week and a half later, he finally comes downstairs. Like, he finally opens his door and comes downstairs. He has been just, just going in his room, going out of his room, and there had been a lot of boxes showing up on the, on the door. <laughs> like, a lot of random U- UPS boxes. And, like, they would be there for, like, five minutes, or I had a whole new and then they would be gone. Malik would go get them and then go back to his room. Malik comes downstairs in an all-red Jordan jumpsuit 
and he had Michael Jordan shoes. Like he just no, okay. Like he just it was not an all red like, Jordan jumpsuit. First of all, he looked like Santa Claus. No, yeah, it was he, not. He it was like a balled. Patagonia. See, see, see. I knew Jordan was going to twist he this. Balled out. I like had four hundred and fifty dollars. No, Uncle it was it card. wasn't on Jordan. So I bought Patag. I bought a Patagonia like Zilla zip up. I bought a Vineyard. This is when Vineyard Vine was popular. Now it's not. But Vineyard Vines like like uh, Polo, which was like a hundred bucks. And then the pants were Lululemon. And they, they I happened to match a little bit. They weren't like crazy matching, but everything was like brownish color. And then I had these fake Jordans from AliExpress. Where <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, when I when I say the Jordan looked like a ballerina, I'm not kidding. <laughs> so word of advice, DHgate way better than AliExpress. AliExpress agreed. If you want, if if you want to buy good fake designer stuff or any of that for anybody. Not, I, I'm not but, endorsing any fake designer. I'm, I I'm endorsing I will. If, if you want to ball, if you want to ball on a budget like me, if you want to buy, go ahead. If you want to buy a top quality Jersey for $10 or $15, step on, not everybody DHK. has the money that you have. Money. <laughs> 10, I've said $10. <laughs> yeah, Jersey. I know, but it's a lot of money I, did, Hey, listen, Hey, listen, I'm large. fiscally responsible when, uh, when somebody sees a Kobe Bryant Jersey, they're not me like, Oh man, well, I had a pair of those Jordan. I think they were the Jordan set, the black and gold. They were the black and gold Olympic packs. You go, if you go look on the website, it makes it look like the guy, the guy, the Michael Jordan made him a layup on stuff. He got, he got, he had Chad doing a dunk. Yeah. It looked like, bro, it, it looked seriously. That, that looked like like a ballerina. It, it was looked, so bad. It was so bad. What, it, look, it literally looked like an airhead. It what's was, the uh, what's the story? Oh, yeah. oh yeah. So the day Malik got his PlayStation taken away <sighs> is my favorite story of Malik <laughs> horrible. that I had. Because I, Malik had an addiction with gaming. People, so, so people I, need to understand my parents. This. I'll give Malik yeah. this. Fortnite just came out. Okay. So like Every, everybody was. Was it Fortnite? Came. It was Fortnite. It was. It was. It was Fortnite. It was. And I'm playing with Andrew Davison. Drew Matten, me and Malik. Yeah, we had a I was good playing. squad going. We're, we we're won a game. It. We won a game before. We won a game beforehand. Bro. And all of a sudden, like Malik's laughing. His room is like right down the uh, the hall from mine. Dad's a so psycho. I can hear Malik yeah. kind of like talking. And all of a sudden, I just see I hear like I don't really know. I didn't hear anything downstairs. I kind of heard like knocking a little like Malik. Anybody home? Like this. Dude, that, and all of a sudden, I just answered. see Malik leaves the party. Messiah leaves the party. And I'm like. <laughs> Why would Malik just like and get out upstairs? Of, I was upstairs. You were and, like in the next room over. From yes. Him. Yeah. So I just was like, why would Malik? I was like, Malik, <sighs> why'd you leave? And he goes, he just goes, I'm up. Oh yeah, I'm just upstairs. And he like, I, he walks in. I was like, who's here? <laughs> and it's Mr. Amin's here, Malik's dad. Got the place and he's, he's like, like I don't know what's here. And he's like, I'm just upstairs hanging out. And everything got really fishy. He's like, oh, just you know, doing doing some laundry or something like that. So it's something <laughs> really out. <laughs> the laundry room's downstairs. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing laundry. And all of a sudden, didn't catch it. All of a sudden, his dad comes upstairs and he just walked past me. I don't know how he came upstairs or had any idea Malik was playing video yeah. games, but he's like. You're playing video games again, aren't you, Malik? And Dude, Malik snapped. all of a sudden just snapped. snapped instead of just like being like, no, I no, wasn't playing. it was the other way around. First of all, my dad snapped because I was playing video games, and I was not I don't know how he caught Malik, Malik playing video games. Malik has his own yeah. version of his I, own I, I, I'm an honest person, bro. I, if I was doing well, something, I let him know. the funniest part about I, it was I, they, I they started myself. arguing like crazy, and I'm in the room over. I don't even know if Mr. Me knows I'm here. But Malik just goes like, all right, fine, Dad. Take it, take it, my take da- it from me right my, now. My dad and took it's like it. thinking that, thinking that like his dad was gonna it. like be like, oh, no, Man, okay, fine, keep it. Like, all, right. all right, unplugged it right from the wall. Bro, this guy walked right out. This guy walked Malik out like was Amazon. Without a pl- yeah, he like shipped it right back, back to where it went. <laughs> yeah, bro. And Malik, the thing was, Malik didn't have a PlayStation for like six months, and he every time he went home, he tried to look for it, could not find the PlayStation either. One day, it was I did. in the closet. It was the greatest day of my life. It's like it's like when you were younger and you're. You, someone would take the cords away. So here's played. here's the thing. I I did I did have somewhat of a video game addiction. I would not say it's as serious as some of the kids have nowadays. That <laughs> it's play. like Alcohol Anonymous. Man. It's I'll not. No, no. Seriously, seriously. I'm going uh, to Malik practice. I'm I'm going to school. I'm going to school and practice. All right. I'm not p- sitting on the game 24 hours a day like some kids do nowadays. I'm actually I'm an athlete still. So I, I would say it was somewhat of an addiction. I wouldn't say it was a serious addiction. I mean, there was nothing else to do. I had a girlfriend at the time. It wasn't. It was just like. You know, I was just like bored. I mean, seriously. But um, people who don't know my dad, my dad's he's he's Arab. He's a Lebanese parent, and for those who are Lebanese, understand the struggle that me and Jordan have. Everything, video games are evil. Do everything the right. Don't ever go out of the what do they call it? The, don't ever leave the path, and just always listen. You know, that's just yeah. how I was growing up. So <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of cultural parents. It is there. no, seriously. I, I mean, on the right you path. you, ha- you hated them now in the moment for it, but but now. After you know how I turned out, I 
can't do anything but thank him. So yeah, I mean, honestly, he was, everybody he was in the asking, party was mad though that I got taken away. No, it was horrible. No, we lost. We <laughs> lost. I, listen, I, I yeah. was hey, listen. I was dropping like ten kills a game, bro. I was killing it. Andrew well, Davidson. Andrew I, I Davidson played Fortnite like, for like two weeks. Andrew's and like, that was oh it. man, yeah. uh, I I don't know where these guys are. Oh, Andrew's down. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. Drew Matton. Drew Matton was good too. Drew, me and Drew were good. Stavon, Stavon was hitting the X button. He didn't know what the hell he was I doing. I was jumping. Um. To kind Pickaxe. of to kind of shift a little bit because there's no like great way to just transition right into it. But no. uh, we we talked about with Miles like right because there's a a lot of kids like we said earlier are watch they tune in if they see something Stevan me teach they want to listen and tune in on it and, and see if they could pick something up to become you one day. So like for you did because you're very analytical. Yeah, and you like do everything like technique is the most important thing of of like aspect of wrestling, but I think of a lot of things for you, like the technique of things. So like, do you, do you write stuff down in a journal? Do you write, do you write Mm -hmm. your goals down? And like, how how do you, how do you act on those? Because it's one thing to write it down. Like we said in the first episode, but it's another thing to act on. What's your mindset? Yeah. So, uh, I don't like write down. So, so basically, uh, I'm pretty technical on my, on my wrestling. Um, me and my dad are kind of like, my dad is, is really good at like understanding wrestling for, he never wrestled. I actually was the one who like got into wrestling. Um, my dad, uh, just kind of want, I asked him for a lot of help and just figuring out like what, you know, I wanted to be the best at a, a, per, for a certain point of my age, everything around like sixth grade, seventh grade. And my dad was like, yeah, I want to learn more about wrestling, you know, and you know, through from me starting to like be able to grow, he started watching some of the best around YouTube was a huge help for him. And I mean, man, the guy knows his wrestling IQ is so high. So yeah, for um, someone who's never wrestled, yeah, especially for someone who's never that wrestled, happens a lot, it happens a lot. a lot. I mean, it's not like super un- rare, but uh, you know, I would say I'm pretty technical, and I I think technique is important. Being able to understand that, then being able to understand strategy to wrestling, yeah. understanding like a, like a lot of willpower and you mental. Have a journal, don't you? Yes, yeah. and. Uh, I do have a journal that I, I got and I started like kind of documenting at first it was kind of more of a documenting thing. Like I was writing stuff down and then writing that stuff down of like how my practices went like on a daily, like what I was doing each day. And it actually was helping me too about like the stuff I was eating like weeks before competition, like right. what was working, what doesn't right. honestly, that's so was it wasn't a big just help. wrestling. It was at like first, diet yes, and everything. Yes, at first, like, especially, and it still it will be kind of transitioned back into that a little bit, I think. Um, but the most important, the thing that I like to use it for is you know, it's kind of like I can write something down that I that kind of is on my mind or I'm thinking about and that I want to incorporate in my practices to right. kind of have is like something just to remember, oh, that was important. This is kind of a key now and uh, think about it while I'm going into practice and actually taking action with it like that. Right. So it's more I'm, I'm kind of thinking like at a, more of like a smaller a, level than like a, just like this is my goal. Um, This is what I plan on doing. Right. And it's like a checklist. It's like. I'm use I am having I do have it as a checklist at some point, right. but some t- most most of the time and like the main purpose of it is to kind of like, okay, how am I going to be planning to get better? Like, what am I planning? Like, what are the areas that I need to improve on? And we've taught we talk about it. I talk about it through my dad. I talk about it with some co- other coaches. I talk about it with um just like inner dialogue about with myself inner dialogue about it and you know how when I'm going to go to practice, what am I going to do to improve this? And when I'm improving it figuring out, oh, if that worked or if it didn't work or what changes I can make. And then I can, you know, edit it and write it down later. Okay, this is what to work on. So also seeing the progress of things, like which I really don't look that far back. I kind of have like, I notch it to figure out like, I don't need to look back what was happening really in like January or like November when I was started the journal. It's like, I can kind of look back like, oh, this is like right at that middle of like a quarantine when I started like, you know, between like that break of like one here, which is where I'm kind of at right now. I can kind of so look you've been back doing it throughout the quarantine. Either. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. And it's not, I wouldn't say it's like as um, daily. It's like multiple times a week though. Right. Um, I'm just kind of like writing down, like when I'm practicing and like, Oh, like, okay, what? And then like, I'll remember, Oh, like I better write this down now because it's important. Um, I made a really good fix like yesterday. I'm going to write this down right now. So you're kind of like just documenting your thoughts to kind of reflect on, yeah, I documented my thoughts about stuff that I'm I'm talking about, like with my like def- defense, my finishing, my you think um, that's positioning, like on the edge, like worrying about like shot clock stuff like that. Yeah, things that are important. Do you think uh, that definitely helped your oh yeah. your wrestling game? Yeah, yeah, it, it just kind of gives me somewhere to like notch, and then like that way I don't like forget about that like important area and just like disregard it when I'm wrestling. Yeah. Like having it written down, it kind of like makes sure like 
I remembered it, and then if I ever forgot it, I, I would like could look back to. Right. You know. But, right. But like, it almost feels like kind of satisfying once you're like have yeah. something that's bothering you, and then you can us. write it down. Yeah. yeah. What, um, I started doing it too. I think I, I think I start picking out. It's the crazy craziest thing. You yeah, everybody's living, got their own thing. You live too. with you yeah. live with, live with him and Miles, and you kind of start picking up on the things that are doing and what makes them successful. So I started keeping a journal before the World Championships, and obviously it didn't turn out great. I didn't qualify for the Olympics, but you the, progr- a really good the progression though. that I had because of um, you know writing stuff down and picking up with Stefan with his diet and stuff like that. Miles for his mental. You know, he plays mental mind games and practice and stuff like that. And just picking that stuff up right. and being able to, like Stevan said, not only writing it down, but it being able to act on it. Yeah. So, like, Stevan does a really, really, really good job of doing something in practice. And I know because he's done it firsthand when I've wrestled with him that if he's going to do something in practice, he makes sure he does it. It doesn't matter if it's after, before. Yeah. It, during, I mean. Depending on the kind of motivation, like, motivated person you are, I do definitely think that. It's easier though to have like I'm more of a person to like have I'd like to have somebody to just like nudge me to do it yeah to do it uh than being like I am obviously everybody's self self motivated to yeah, a point of course yeah. but um, you it's it helps it always to have helps. somebody to push you a little bit more always always and I mean um, some people need it some people don't um but one thing that helps me about it is like uh the the journal can kind of help me uh know what I'm gonna if I write down stuff that I want to cover in right. that practice or like write a mock up like of like the areas I want to cover, right. I can like just have that in my head, um, and be like, I wanted to cover that, and then I didn't. If I didn't cover, I'd be kind of like, oh, okay. Did you sure. even do that? Like when, uh, like because for the most part, uh, elementary wrestling, like youth wrestling, even throughout college, you have like a coach that runs the practice and kind of sets a format. Do you? Did, was that something you did on your own, like after no, practice? Well, or something? um, so when I was younger, um, when, my dad was always kind of like the guy for me to help push me in something. So like he would watch my practice, we'd be like going over stuff, and then we would like talk about the stuff I wasn't doing very good, and right. like I would be at practice like for like an hour after a lot of times, right. and just like going over stuff. Grab a kid, be like, oh hey, come here really quick, I want to feel this. It's like I'll be I'll be like annoyed about it because my dad would be like extra like you know how it, my dad's not like any like crazy like he's not some crazy no. wrestling dad no but, but he, like, de- he definitely like because he's so passionate and like he really enjoys watching his son he might play. it might come off to like people who like aren't as motivated to be like oh what's this guy like doing um but i, I will like and like they're just like want to go home and like do whatever yeah. so like the, i'll grab some kid and i'll be like it'll end up like helping him out and stuff like that but they'll like be put out about it whatever but so i'll be like oh geez like i bet they're gonna be like, annoyed but honestly every time i do it i'd be like super satisfied and like, that feeling of just like knowing i like accomplished like what i needed in that practice like is what i like i like that feeling right. if i can if i spend well, that extra time does. check it's like it's like making your bed in the morning you starting the day off with something yeah, yeah. Like checked off your list you know yeah I mean? and in that way it's like um if you wrestle a practice and you didn't have the best day or you did have a good day and you didn't work on the area you wanted to and you know I need I need a little bit more air, uh, clearance here or, or something there, it's not just like, oh, I'm tired today and I'm just going to like go home right now. You can right. actually like spend the time on that area. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So like doing that and like holding yourself accountable to that a little bit, I think is like something that really helped me at a young age that I think can get forgotten about a little bit at the higher level yeah. just because um, everyone's like, oh, well, you guys know your basics, like you're going to do it. And then like, you know, you can maybe add a little bit extra stuff and everyone's like, oh, I'm ready to go because you're kind of like everyone's on your own in, in the college. You know, you have coaches that are helping push you and doing stuff. It's just a little more self. It's more self. Yeah, it's also, it's kind of self-paced. I it mean, is. It you, is. You're, you're, you work with your team and your coaches and you follow your team, but um, it is more self-paced than, than, it, than uh, youth and high school wrestling where it's all like structured throughout your coach sets a, pro, sets a practice and that's how it is. So it kind of forces you to, you kind of have to learn that to be successful in college and Olympic law level wrestling. Yeah. Because it's kind of like, you're not writing your own practice, but you are at the same time. Technically. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you you are. And uh, so like for my, for my dad, having him, he's kind of like that, like life coach guy. That's like always been there for me to, to uh, hold me accountable, tell me to do like, help me to be like, push me to do this. And I would like, I'll feel bad if I don't cover the areas, which is like uh, it's funny, but like it honestly helps. Like if you if you, you. It, yeah. like if you're like ah, you're, he's right. Like you. I, I want to yeah. make that improvement. Like 
you know, if he's like not like happy about it, then I'm not going to be happy about it. Then I'm going to make sure I make the adjustments. I'd rather than that than telling myself, "Oh, great job, I did it awesome today." You right, know what right. I mean? Lie to yourself. Lie yeah. to myself yeah. about it, and then not make the changes. So, yeah. which can be very easy to do, actually. Right. You know, it's, uh, I mean, everybody's kind of guilty of it. Oh, so. of course. I think everybody here has done it. It's, yeah, there's, not, there's nobody yeah. that's not done. Everyone that. in the world has done it. You yeah. Know? <laughs> it's it's true. It's, it's it's a majority of the problem with people not getting to where they want to get to. They yeah. make excuses on why yeah. they're not getting there. Why, 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 why can't I do this? Like literally like seriously, like, like kind of how Matt, this quarantine has kind of proved that because yeah, people, people, it's going to be really interesting to see these, what people come out of quarantine. People yeah. come out of like, quarantine because it's like, all been self paced. Hey, guy like Jack Medley, man, keep an eye on him. I'm telling you, man, that guy has been doing it. All quarantine, man. Uh, Stevan, Stevan can attest to it too, man. That's a guy to watch out for next year. Yeah, he's really. Uh... He's a perfect example, man. That guy doesn't wait. I mean, I, I know, I know, we don't either, but I, I, he's been disciplined every day. I mean, the guy ran a marathon. He's like, hey, Stevan, Malik, you guys gonna run a marathon? I think me and Stevan said on that one. Yeah, he ran like a. <laughs> he ran a marathon in like seven minute fourteen second pace, which is pretty insane. Yeah, insane. Pretty insane. Um, going to, talking about next year's season, and then uh, we'll kind of wrap it up here just because I don't want to keep you too long, but um, how excited are you for this? I know Miles talked about it in episode one, but it is really such a unique experience that, that you guys are going to have, and it's, it might not happen ever again, um, but like this team that you guys have brewing and, and the, yeah, chemi- I'm, the I'm chemistry pumped. you have between I'm all pumped. of you guys. I'm pumped, yeah. We've been, we've been kind of waiting on this for a long time. Um, like, yeah, Sean put it on hold so this could happen. Yeah. So first of all, that's awesome, like, the fact that they were willing to be like patient about what we're going to be coming up to. Now, hopefully, we just can overcome with COVID uh, our school. Too. Hope, well, yeah, I'll get, I'll get to that basically. Yeah. But the COVID part, just making sure we can like hopefully have the season. Yeah. Hopefully, have um, the important stuff. There's a lot happen. of things that are that we don't know what's going to happen. I just want to have the important things happen and have the availability to get better, so we everybody can improve. Right. Not just like me. And, uh, but obviously the one I think we all need to have, like, everybody has to be individually driven to a point where we're not going to do good as a team. If everybody's not doing, if like one person isn't doing like, so everybody has to have their own driving force and has to make the improvements because I can't even as much as I'm a team leader, I, it's hard to, you know, I'm, I mean, I can tell people to do stuff and be like on them and on them, but we have to make, everybody's got to be hungry to make it, to make improvements in the room on a daily and weekly basis to get to that level. They can't just, you know, they, we can't, we can't just be like, uh, we have to hold ourselves accountable, um, individually. And obviously every the team's got to hold each other accountable, but that's most important. Second, obviously is injuries. Everybody's got to stay healthy. Right. Which um, typically at Michigan, there's been a lot of people that are injury prone. Yeah. 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 Um, definitely. And, uh, I mean, I, I would say that I've, in the last two years, since I started making 57 kilos, I had an injury that cost me the NCAA championship. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, knee yeah. I, yeah, my knee, I had a knee injury. I got like my knee torn like five weeks before the NCAA. That was when, four, a week, that a month was before. when, uh, I beat, his name from Iowa tried to, uh, no, no, not when he tried no, to come no, 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 it was, I beat, on, I beat Suriano in the duel and I tore my MCL against him in oh, yeah, the match. Yeah, 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 like halfway yeah. in the match, I tore my MCL. When I took him down, right. and then I re- I won the match, and then I was in a straight leg brace for a week, came out um of it and did Big Tens. I came out of it and like wrestled a match at Big Tens, and then defaulted to six just to keep my the record undefeated. Yeah, and then I had to go back into a brace and started drilling after that, like the first time drilling. So I literally had to wrestle a match after being like in a straight leg brace, got on the bus and wear a brace for two days, and then wrestle a match. Yeah, like it was insane. Yeah, that's and great. my leg was like atrophied at the at like nationals. Like I was in like. Like tape. That's why you didn't wrestle at Europeans. I, think. I didn't wrestle at Europeans yeah. like th- a, a month after because I was technically supposed to stay off it for four to six weeks. But after I took, I had to, w- I had to wait another three to four weeks just for me to get back to like, like uh, somewhat of drilling. Right, right. So it was rough. And I mean, I mean, yeah, that was a, that was last my last college season. I ended up wrestling getting third, so I still had a good tournament. But I was it wasn't except- where you wanted to be. No, because no. it was it's frustrating no. losing to the person that you beat that you beat season. and got injured against. That person then lose to him when it, when it actually like technically yeah. counts. Counts. So we're like it was like very frustrating actually. Right. Um. But anyways, injury is something that like a couple guys uh we need to make sure we're on it. And I feel like I'm on my 
my thing just to stay healthy and stay like injury uh, prevent like prevention. Right. I'm I'm on that on a daily basis, and but other guys need to get on that yeah. besides just their strength training. Oh yeah, um, ice baths, yeah. ice baths. Uh, you know, seeing band band work. Early, yeah. Seeing the trainer for any type of things that you feel sore about. Right. Um, stretching after pra- before and after practice, stretching. Right. Yeah. Um, for muscle stuff. Um, doing band work for your knees, shoulders, elbow, whatever, an- right. uh, ankles, different stuff like that, even. Um. And I think that's important. And then the third is just like, you know, um, like I said, pushing yourself. And I, I just want to see because there's so much potential on the team. I mean, you guys could win it. That we could win it? Yeah. Yes. And 100%. it's just like, I don't, I'm tired of talking about being like, oh, we got a really good team this year. I'm like, yeah, well, like, is, we need was, to, we need yeah. to just do it. Like, right. you know. That's how it and was now, for and, us. And you have the best opportunity statistically now. Oh, yeah. Now yeah. it's, yeah. With, with the guys that you have yeah. and the, the firepower that, could potentially be definitely for Michigan wrestling of definitely. 2021. So, oh, yeah. um, and then yeah, but yeah, we have like two, like at least two to four possible NCAA Olympians. champs, right? Yeah, you, know, I mean, you have two Olympians, Olympians too. Two well, Olympians, yes. Well, Logan, many, Logan could possibly I'm be saying, one. Mason, Mason, and we Mason. have we have you know like guys like Kanan. Kanan, Will, you know, guys like Jack, guys like Drew Matten, guys like you know everybody. There's the teams like loaded up. Jelani, everybody. Well, you go can, from you start from the from the low weights, and you got Jack Madley, Kurt Mahendry. Yeah, and then you have you, Joey, me, you at thirty three, and then Drew Madden and Joey, Joey, Ju- yeah. Drew Madden and Joey at forty one. And you have like forty nine is Kanan, Kanan Store, fifty seven is Will, Will Lawan, six, uh, and then between sixty five and seventy four, you have like Cameron, NASA, Cameron. Cameron. You have tons of other guys in the room that could peak at the right time. And, yeah, and Reese, be, Reese can wrestle. Reese, Reese, Reese Houston Houston has, can, can be can a Reese be really good. At, like he, because I don't like counting anybody out. No, because, never, and, never, never. That's just never. to just avoid the conversation. Then you have upper weights. You have like <laughs> yeah. you have Miles. You have Jelani. You have right. Andrew Davison. Right. I mean, it's it goes, the list and that's goes but but Bobby Strigow, baby. But having that is like, it's it makes you feel good knowing that you have so many people. You're so deep. Because yes. if there are injuries that happen, you can't. Sometimes you can't avoid them. You have a guy ready to step up to the plate, and that's super important in a, in a college program. Yeah, we. I think the big thing too is just like keeping everybody like when we're improving and stuff, but like keeping everybody like simmered down and settled, like composed. Too. Yeah. No. No. Because no preseason like, hype. Yeah, because everybody gets like too, sometimes like I know our team can get really like people get certain guys can get worked up. Yeah. And 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 care about all that too much, and when yeah. in reality, like it doesn't mean anything at all. No, it's an opinion. So it's like literally. Just tune it out. Focus on yourself. Have fun with the, what everybody's doing, and do what you're doing. Or we're doing in practice. Like it's no different when they're you're out in the mat. And like we're not even gonna have fans in the stand, stands probably this year. So like, no, what, yeah, it'll what be, are you worried about everybody? That, it'll be such an interesting. Like you guys are gonna be a part of such an interesting college season because it's gonna be so different from what you guys are used to. Yeah. Everyone's used you're, to. Yeah. Stefan, you you'd kind of be a little bit used to it too, because when you go over to uh, internationals, a you little get bit some different. crazy awesome crowds. Yeah, no, and I'm saying about an international. Yeah, like, internationally, you get like some of the best crowds yeah, you've wrestled. You do. Yeah, and but now also, you can have no crowd. Yeah, at no, all. but it's up and down too because you go to some tournaments like in Poland, you you might be the number one guy in the world and nobody's gonna cheer for you. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I mean that's just how it is. Yeah, I mean, it'll be interesting. It'll be a cool dynamic. Yeah, it'll be to really, see. really, really odd. But, but we'll um, see. the. There won't be any more Kamaras, hopefully. No Kamara, more Kamara, 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 Santa. Are we talking about Alvin Kamara? Yeah, <laughs> Alvin Kamara. Um, what the heck did that feel like when you did when that did happen? I didn't like, even know he did it. On? I was just trying to get back points. You he know might that? go in the UFC. <laughs> awesome to say. So, wait, you didn't have to make a like call. you didn't you didn't realize that he was like. I just do. He was like pulling on it like illegally, but I was like holding him on his back, and it like didn't hurt at all on my arm. Like it was like a terrible Kimura. Yeah, it was yeah. so bad. So I was like, "What are you doing over what there?" What did you yeah. say to him after the match? Because what was the score? Like eleven to one. 11 and then I was one. like, "Man, just give me a takedown and count some back points. Don't worry about my arm." I'll yeah, like, you told him to him. grow up. <laughs> no, the oh, interviews. The interview is hilarious. I don't think he's been in a position where he got his been getting his ass kicked at all. Maybe if he lost, it's been up close. But I don't know how he, if he knows how to handle a, an ass beating. For anybody that well, has- no, it was just frustrating because you know. Like, I lost to the guy. I was kind of unprepared. I, I got to give him props for this, though. Every pretty good wrestler that DeSanto has wrestled, he's beaten the first time they've wrestled. Yeah. Because I don't yeah. think people realize, like, that, like, w- the way he wrestles, like, how strong he is with his, like, grip. Yeah. He, like, rips, like, he puts his nails in your arms, and he's going to, like, hit you with the fireman's if you don't come prepared. Well, then he, who did he wrestle in the finals? Was Spencer Lee? State finals in high school. Yeah, yeah he, he did. He did. And that, I mean, he and that was the first time. I think no, no, that time actually that that isn't one. But I I don't know. If, I think they've wrestled before. But, Suriano. but I'm just thinking from college. He's beaten yep. me. Beaten Suriano. Beaten Roman Babayan. Uh, yes, he yeah. beat him. He's beaten. Uh, 
Seth, Seth Gross. Gross. He's beaten like so many good names, but then after that, you kind of just like, oh, oh, okay, I know what I need to do, right. sort of. Yeah, avoid. You know the what game. I mean? He's, and then nobody else, everybody yeah. else, has beaten he's him. He's changed after that. it a little bit at Iowa, though. He he's changed a little bit the way that he wrestled. Yes, I yeah. honestly think the way that he's wrestling is a little more like not easy to wrestle, but a little more like realistic. Like it'll that like he's definitely would make it. Well, I I know I should. I'm not like gonna be talking for somebody that get my weight class, but I definitely right. think like uh, his wrestle that way that he's like starting to wrestle like is something that's gonna make him improve as a wrestler like greater. Um. And add more competition to the league. Yeah, way. definitely. But it's that's not. It's also not as like antics too. But right? it's not as like. Uh, it's not as like difficult to wrestle. I would say it's right. not as like I, the way that he's like wrestling. People aren't like. It's not like annoying and like it's frustrating to hit for him to wrestle him in, as much anymore. At least this last year I saw. Right. But like, it's like gonna help him improve. Right. better because you could only have gotten i feel like you only like well you're not like, you're in iowa's room you're gonna get better yes so yeah. i think he's making the, be- the well, iowa, better i was the favorite so. i feel like this year too i mean i well, was a good to team ha- i was gonna have to be probably the team to beat so yeah. which is kind of it's kind of like when our dads wrestled yeah. in michigan, michigan and it was iowa. I- michigan and iowa which yeah. would be really cool dynamic to see happen again yeah but michigan um, was the only team to beat iowa i think that year too yeah yeah they won the Big Ten champ, yeah, Big Ten championship. Big Ten. Um, yeah. But we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up here. I don't want to keep you too long. I know you gotta drive all the way back to Ann Arbor. Um, yeah. I thank you for for coming for on. Me yeah, of course. Out. I thank yeah, you no for problem. coming yeah. on to uh, episode two. Love you guys, and, and thank you. Much yeah, no love for you, Stevan. Thank yep. you. Peace, guys. Mm-hmm.